Okay, so I ran into a problem while in the middle of recording my comparison video comparing all three of these ATSC 3.0 set-top boxes that you can see here on my uh, TV console. So when testing these boxes out, I went to the channels on Miami's UHF Lighthouse on RF Channel 31, WTVJ, and I first started testing the Zinwell box, and I was getting a gray screen, and I'll show you that in a second. But then I went over to the GT Media Converter X1 because I didn't have this one connected to the internet, so I'm like, okay, maybe there's a glitch with this one. And sure enough, the GT Media Converter X1 was having the same issue. And then I just started the ADTH box and the ADTH box is not able to display it either. Now, as you can see here, this is extremely important. Right where it says SNR, the SNR right now is almost 24 decibels. I am using a paper clip for all three of these, but in terms of physics, it doesn't matter. The SNR on all three of these are stable and all more than high enough to decode PLP1 with the layer division multiplexing correction factor that's applied on WTVJ. So these channels are not working. Um, again, I have the ADTH box connected to the internet and the WPBT uh, internet or virtual ATSC 3.0 channel, as people in the industry are calling them, that require an internet connection, that is not working. The other channel that requires an internet connection to play uh, is also not being loaded up. As you can see in the upper corner right here, if it can focus, yeah, there you go. Um, there is the internet icon, which is a Wi-Fi icon, and it's displayed there, which shows that there is an active internet connection and I can go to any of the channels on WTVJ, and I just get the spinning wheel, but as you can see, if I press the right arrow, I can bring up the Run3 TV interface, and not only that, I can actually play from beginning still. And I will start watching it from a server on the internet, but it won't work with the actual over-the-air broadcast which is crazy. Now, the other lighthouse in Miami, which is on the high VHF band, it's on RF channel 10. This lighthouse is still working perfectly fine. It's got completely different owners. Uh, and this lighthouse is still working. And again, I'm using a paper clip for reception, but I just want to show you the SNR is 17 decibels. That SNR is high enough to play back this channel because this White House requires a 14 decibel, 14 and a half or so decibel uh, minimum receive SNR in order to start playing channels. So we've got very decent room there with a paper clip and all three of these are the same. But unfortunately, yeah, these other channels from uh, that WTVJ lighthouse are just not working. And I just popped into another one, as you can see here. My thoughts are that it is a DRM issue. If I go over and look at the HD home run, everything is coming in as normal. The structure of the channels, the way that everything is being sent is the same as it's always been. When I went through Wireshark, I'm getting the same amount of UDP packets coming in as before. Uh, in fact, if you let this sit for long enough, the ADTH box will actually display a frame. So it is decoding something from the over-the-air transmission. It's just not able to play back the audio and video. So unfortunately, uh, what I can tell, now it's not conclusive, but from my understanding, the issue is related to DRM. So let me just show you the other two boxes real quick as well because they're experiencing the same issue. Okay, I just switched over the HDMI input to the Zinwell box, this one right here. This one is supposed to be able to play back channels with DRM without an internet connection, and that has been the case previously, historically. Uh, if I tap into this uh, WTBJ channel from that lighthouse, as you can see, the signal to noise ratio, the SNR is more than enough to decode this. And as you can see, I get this gray screen, and this has been happening with everything. If I go to a different channel on the same lighthouse, it does the exact same thing. I get this gray screen. This is all I get. 
is a gray screen. And then now let me switch over to the GT Media HDTV Converter X1. Okay, we have switched over to the GT Media Converter X1. I just wanna show you for context, this is very important. As you can see, the SNR is fluctuating between 20 and 21 decibels with the paperclip. Again, that is enough to get in the signal perfectly fine. For PLP1, even with the LDM correction factor, if you try to tune into one of these channels, you get stuck on this signal locked and then the frequency, and it just sits there, and it sits there, and it's not able to play it. I can go over to another channel. Uh, let's do an ATSC 1.0 channel just randomly here. It's able to play back perfectly fine. Um, get out of it and restart it just to kind of refresh some things here. And let's go back to this signal locked and it just sits there and it just says signal locked and it just stays on this forever. Just like the spinning wheel with the ADTH box and then just like the gray screen with the Zimmer box. So there is a problem with this station. Again, I don't know if it's DRM related. It definitely seems to be a likely possibility based on everything that I have seen. Uh, so unfortunately, uh, I'm not able to make my video about comparing all these that I wanted to right now, but I will try to contact the station Possibly the station engineer could be watching this video. If not, I'll uh, contact the station, see if this can be resolved because this is a pretty big deal. And then I'll hopefully get back to comparing all three of these boxes so that I can at least have another lighthouse to compare these with instead of just the WPLG lighthouse. So as you can see, this other lighthouse is coming in perfectly fine. It's the other one that isn't. Now, before I conclude this video, I just want to say that I was not planning on making this video specifically to any of those in the broadcast industry that are watching this right now and are pro ATSE 3.0 and have talked about how amazing it is. Have you actually used any of the ATSE 3.0 products on the market. Because unfortunately, and I love the ATSE 3.0 standard, I think it has the potential to greatly positively impact people's reception of over-the-air TV channels. It has wonderful capabilities. But have you actually tried for yourself any of these boxes? And I'm kind of foreshadowing to my next video, the experience is not very good. So when I see all of these people in the broadcast industry saying how amazing particularly this box in the middle is, it is not good. The experience is horrible. And if this doesn't get fixed, issues like this that are happening time and time again, then your industry and the push for ATSE 3.0 will fail. So I just finished up editing and I actually left my TV on the entire time and look at what's been happening the entire time. There has not been a no signal graphic that has popped up because it knows that there is indeed a signal and it has just been spinning the entire time that I've been editing. All right, and I let it sit for about 10 more minutes and there is our single frame, guys. It popped out the user interface to the channel grid view and it has displayed a single frame in this entire hour. So I, I finally got the frame, guys. I finally got the single frame to display.